Здравейте, приятели, аз съм Петко, а това е Рацио Уикли, нашето седмично издание на подкаста, в което ние с Никола обсъждаме най-интересното от света науката за изминалата седмица. А, днешният епизод обаче ще е малко по-различен поради две причини. Първо, че ще бъде релиснат, както се казва на чист български язик, в аудио и в видео версия. А, и второ, защото днес няма да правим обичайното, да си говорим за най-интересното от света на науката, а днес ще посветим целия си епизод на един единствен а, човек и това е доктор Робин Андрюс. Поканихме Робин, а, защото искахме да си поговорим малко за вулкани, а и е написала една нова страхотна книга, която искаме да обсъдим. А, с Робин сме стари познайници, а, бяхме го поканили на едно от предишните големи наши събития, мисля, че беше есенното рацио а, и така човека си тръгна с изключително много овации. А, ние, естествено, имахме удоволствието да прекараме малко повече време след самото събитие с Андрио и трябва да ви кажа, че той е едно фантастично човешко същество. Затова е истинско удоволствие той да е тук днес. А, и разбира се, тук с мен е и Никола. Никола, здрасти, приятел. Здравей, Петко. А, как е Много английският ми е тебе? Ръждив ли е напоследък или? Ами, ръждив е доста. Ще видим как ще изчегъртаме корозията. Айде да видим сега. Така че, ето ви един дисклеймер. Днешният епизод ще е изцяло на английски язик, така че молим за извинение от тези от вас, които са свикнали да слушат неща на български. Днешният епизод ще е изцяло на английски, така че може да изключите още от сега, ако това не ви кефи. Ме със сигурност ме кефи през Извинение към нашите приятели от Легчево. А, нашите приятели от Легчево. Да, е тук един хубав шаут-аут към тия двама пичове. Да. Добре, ами ако искате започваме, аз директно превключвам на английски. Робин, как ти мой фрайн? Ей, ти е окей. Алайв, което е на бъде минимум на този пункт. Така, много добре. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you are looking good. I I did make a very generous uh, introduction about yourself, but without stating anything uh, that we know formally about you. Uh, so if you, if, if you're just going to allow me, I'm just going to uh, like recite some of the things that one can read in your bio from from the website. Uh, so apparently you're sure. not you're not only a science journalist and uh, a volcanologist, uh, but you describe yourself uh, as well as a time lord for some. Odd reason as a mischief maker. You're obviously a yes. public speaker, photographer, uh, an author. So you are a man of all traits, or was that the same? Yeah, I guess maybe. I just I get really impatient, so I need to do lots of different things. Right. Uh, <laughs> including making mischief, whichever whichever definition people use that with. Although I did talk to someone recently who who took mischief as like the really old world definition, like malevolent evil kind of mischief. And they're mm-hmm. like, why would you want to do that? And I was like, uh, that's, <laughs> that's hard to explain. <laughs> uh, you, don't, you, you don't strike me as an evil person, you know, by, 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 by the look of it, but uh, you never know. Probably yeah. the most sophisticated yeah, no, yeah, evil exactly. fights in a form like that. You know? in a, I'm burying in... it deep within my cold and empty heart. Right, right. Well, it does seem yeah. that uh, you are uh, very keen and in looking into the cold, uh, not cold, the hot abyss of uh, of what we might see as hell on earth. So you're a volcanologist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how did that happen? Yeah. How does one become um, a volcanologist, mate? Yeah. Well, the the official answer is that you have to push someone you hate into a volcano, but it's uh, that's apparently not allowed anymore. So you don't really do that anymore. <laughs> It's, it's seen as a bit rude um, uh, because yeah, they're not supposed to even know. So anyway, but no, I, I was uh, so I was raised on a uh, partly on a diet of video games and the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which is obviously one of the best games ever, has a has a death mountain volcano in it. Yeah. Um, and it's obviously not, not realistic in any way. But when you're a kid or even now, it's like it looks amazing. It's got like monsters on the inside. And as someone grow, growing up in the UK, I thought, you know. Are these things kind of real, maybe? And turns out with some Googling, they are real. And I was like, well, that's what I want to do. I originally wanted to do something about stars, but I realized that it would take quite a while for me to get there, if ever. So volcanoes mm. are the next best, most flamboyant thing you can stand on. Um, and it was just that was just the persistence of, I want to do that. I want to do exploding mountains. Someone has to do it. So that was literally all the logic I had. I had no other reasoning behind it. Like, this is cool. It's nothing like other things, so I'm going to do this thing. It started from Zelda. The UK, so it started yeah, from Zelda. From Zelda. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, you, you never know where where a video game might take you. Yeah. You know? Jesus. Yeah, Nicole, it, 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 it's a funny. It's a yeah. funny story, actually, because I, I, I kind of remember a game from my childhood. It was called Monkey Island. 
Mm-hmm. And there was a volcano there which played some major role at some point of the adventure. Mm-hmm. And this volcano was vegetarian. So by the <laughs> end, you have to push a huge pile of cheese inside so it makes some ga- gases inside and it erupts. <laughs> That so, sounds so, amazing. Although <laughs> that's uh, you know, what a waste of cheese though. But uh, I mean, a piece of cheese. At least it was. Uh, at least it wasn't a vegan volcano, right? Uh, it's like Jesus. Yeah, it was a it's, vegan it's, volcano. Cheese, yeah. cheese, cheese is not vegan, <laughs> is it? No, it's vegetarian. But oh, it's the vegetarian, volcano right. was vegan. Right, yeah, right, right. It kind of gave up of a uh, human uh, diet. Right, right, right. <laughs> I gotta look up this volcano. That's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, so uh, so so, Robin. One of the reasons that we invited you here is obviously you're a you're a pretty cool guy, and we wanted to share with people what a cool guy you oh. are. Uh, but um, as well as you can see at the background, I'm trying to uh, to show how intellectually <laughs> superior I, uh, am I to everyone. Uh-huh. Now, uh, well, it's none, none of these. Intimidated. Yeah, you you should be. Yeah, yeah, because I've never, well, I, I haven't read like half of these. You know, it's like somebody somebody said uh-huh. that at least half of your books you Thanks shouldn't have read. Yeah, just to remind uh-huh. you how much left you've got. Uh, but so there's plenty yeah. of books at the at the back of me, and I have I don't have even a single book about volcanoes. But uh, now there is one that I actually want to have because. The way that I buy books is very simple. I look at Goodreads, you know, and I, I and I check out the ratings. Uh, that's uh-huh. not how. That's not how I do it. That's a stupid way to do it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, either, either way, I checked on your new book, uh, which is uh, Super Volcanoes, with a subtitle of What They Reveal About Earth and the Worlds Beyond. And uh, oh. I was surprised to see that it has a rating of four point two, which is awesome. You know, people obviously yeah, like definitely. your book. Oh. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, I was really actually I was bricking it, as you say, uh, when the first reviews were coming out and um, and not just those ones, but like ones in those, you know, various publications and stuff. And I was genuinely terrified because I'd never written a book before. Yeah. Um, I'd written the longest feature I'd written was like 3000 words. So when you're writing something that's like 95,000 words, which is just an average length popular science book, apparently yeah. handing that into your editor is one of the most tense and scary things I think I've ever done. So I was happy to see it's all panning out well, and I don't have to hide my head in shame or anything. Well, was your editor a scientist, by the way, or is that how it no. works, or is it just a regular editor? Just a regular, just well, just a regular. I don't know. I mean, yeah, just a, uh, um, um, she is uh, an editor of many kinds of books, kind of thing. So it's kind of uh, you know, and it goes through like crazy, like there's like five different rounds of edits and things to check if if like. It reads well and everything like that, but no, none of them are scientists. They just read it like anyone would read it, kind of thing. Sure, which I guess is sure. the point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that that actually makes sense. Uh, this is why me and Nicola are a team because he's the scientist on uh, on you know in our, uh, in our in our group, and I'm just the average dude who who doesn't know much. Yeah, you know? and in order to balance the content, the average that we dude that doesn't know agree, much, I, I, I wouldn't get that on a business card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I, I don't know about that, but it is a fair description. Yeah, you know? let's just put it this way. It's a uh, role. It's a very important role, but of course, of course, it's like there is. A, there should be an asshole in each group. You know, they say you know, it's like whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's good. It, it, I mean, I still haven't read read the book, uh, but apparently, very smart people have, and the reviews are really uh, raving. I, I even took the time to read one of them, which was uh, excellent. Uh, but I still haven't read uh, the book, so I will expect uh, you know from you to give us a. Uh, 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 what is the word? Uh, a synopsis of uh, of what the book preview? is all about. A sneak so. preview. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess you're the best yeah. person to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, the way I figured it was, um, firstly, I didn't want to write a book that just explained stuff like a te- mm-hmm. like in in a textbook because you could get a textbook for that, or you could go to uni or school, or whatever. So I wanted to write a book that was genuinely like fun and entertaining because all the popular science books that exist on volcanoes which there aren't many are all about how everyone's <coughs> everyone got wiped out like Krakatoa and Pompeii like you kind of it's all about death everyone's gonna die everyone's dead and even though there there is a fascinating bit to that like <laughs> there, there's obvious fascination volcanoes are also like mostly just amazing like fireworks shows and you know on earth they create the land we stand on and they've incubated life and they've also like tried to wipe it out, uh, but failed so far. Um, and they, on other planets, they determine whether a world like lives or dies and they tip planets over and they do all kind of crazy shit. And I genuinely had no deeper 
you know, like normally there's like a thesis behind a book where people are like, oh, well, I want people to think deeply on this issue. My thing was literally as basic as I want people to read it and go, holy crap, that is awesome. That's it. That's yeah. no, nothing, nothing deeper really than that. Just like, wow, like in the sense that when you're growing up, dinosaurs are cool and space is cool and like animals are cool and stuff like that. And there is that element of volcanoes too, but I think it's, it kind of gets weeded out quite early on because if you see volcanoes in the news, generally it's because they're doing something scary. And yeah, I yeah. wanted to write something that was like, well, 95% of the time they're just doing something amazing. And the people that study them are nuts. So <laughs> it's kind of, you know, I wanted that that to be there. So it's more like, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's more about uh, just the really cool, like really cool shit that happens in nature. It just happens to be stuff that can like, Melt your face off if you get too close. <laughs> <this> time, <so. laughs> well, I mean, isn't isn't that the way that usually get uh, that that usually people get interested in sciences when they um, you know uh, get in, get acquainted? Is it the word if they if they consume yeah. some type of art, uh, whether it's a book, a comic book, um, uh, mm. you know, they they hear a play, uh, uh, you know, some music, or they watch a movie, uh, and from the right. pure aesthetics of it, from from the aesthetic and emotional experience from that uh, of of this. A uh, piece of art, you actually, uh, you know, get more and more interested. So one of the reasons that I uh, uh, like, uh, well, I wouldn't say I'm fascinated by, by volcanoes. I'm not going to lie to you, but you know, I still f- find them, uh, you know, e- extremely aesthetically pleasing. Uh, is uh-huh, uh, yeah. is this movie? I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's called in- Into the Inferno. It's a documentary by Werner Her- Herzog. I don't, uh, have you seen that? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Have you, have yeah, you seen I haven't actually seen it, but I know I know of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, man! It's uh, it's like it's like the opposite of you wanted to do. Uh, what I mean by that is like it's the exact <laughs> exact opposite of fun. You know, it's freaking horrifying. You know? But the way that it is <laughs> yeah. filmed. Yeah, it's exactly like yeah. hell on earth, you know, like with people in these suits and seeing these huge rivers mm. of uh, of molten lava, you know, and it's it's just mm. simply simply amazing. Uh, but but you know, from yeah. starting from starting from Zelda, you suddenly wanted to get you know a deep dive in in in, in into into vol- volcanoes. So was that intellectually satisfying? Yes. I mean, are there many things to learn about volcanoes because it's. Uh, you know, it's essentially type of uh, a type of geology, isn't it? And geology is more often like associated with, uh, yeah, like that. yeah. That's the thing. Like, it's, <laughs> I'm not so I'm not very interested. I'm not very interested in rocks <laughs> because yeah. uh, they don't really do they don't really do anything after they've been made. Really, I mean, I guess I guess you can have a landslide, but still, um, that's just lazy, really, on their part. But um, yeah. the uh, no, I'm interested in in the ways that like worlds work and they and the way that they like live or die or what or, or basically what you know volcanoes make a world the way it is it's basically the planet letting off all that heat it's trapped on on the inside so not only do they have like a massive social impact in good and bad ways because as you know you can see in like iceland this year and, and la palma in spain and everywhere else you know they they really affect you on a really visceral level and like i don't think anyone sees lava or these giant explosions and thinks like eh like it's it's it hits you in a very like <laughs> It hits you in a very, I mean, that would be funny though, but it hits you in a very, um, like primordial sort of level in the way that like, you know, it's, um, I don't know. It's, it's, they're almost like giant gods in a way, rather than anything that you can kind of explain with science, even though you can explain it with science. They're just, they're just beyond our existence kind of thing. They, they last longer than us by thousands of years millions of years they'll be there long after we've gone sort of thing and you know the fact that we get a a small opportunity to go up to them and just be wowed by this like incandescence is kind of i don't know makes me feel quite fortunate to be alive actually yeah 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 well i i, I, yeah, I, I get, it's uh, go ahead it's funny that you have mentioned those most recent eruptions. So it, it kind of wonder. I, I, it makes me wonder: Have you chosen the right time to present your book just when all those eruptions and volcanoes are back to fashion? I mean, uh, this year we have seen amazing things, mm. starting from New Year, like in January or February was oh. Etna. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we got the Greenland, the big Greenland volcano, and then of course the big, uh, the big sensation in the media, the La Palma in the coronary islands. So uh, I, I, I wonder, I, I, are those events coming to be more often than usual, or something? It, it feels like it, doesn't it? But it's actually it's one of these weird coincidences that's like. Um... 
Uh, well, firstly, actually, it is very good timing. <laughs> Just that, yeah, it's a well, perfect yeah, timing for your book. Yeah, yeah it is weirdly good timing. But uh, the, uh, the other the other thing is that um, at any moment, um, any average day of you know, about 40 volcanoes somewhere erupting. They often just don't make the news because they're not happening near anyone. Uh, they're not threatening to melt anyone or bury anyone in anything. So, um, or, or at least not, just, not anyone always, that we care about. You know, that's, that's the other thing. True. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, and it's just uh, um, uh, but this year, it just happens to keep erupting near where people live um or in in somewhere or another and once up there in the news they they then even eruptions that aren't even that like socially significant they kind of make the news as well so it's kind of like an illusion of the way the media hmm. the general news media reports on it i, I can't really say the media because i'm part of the media but you know what i mean um <laughs> so it's it's just a coincidence yeah. actually what would be really frightening is if no volcanoes are erupting if no, <laughs> none of them are erupting <laughs> Then, then something has gone seriously wrong. Like Earth's heart is dead. <laughs> that would be <laughs> terrible. But uh, again, weirdly fascinating. But yeah, that would uh, be terrible. Is there is there anything special about this recent volcano uh, that uh, Nicola? Please help me out, mate. Uh, this uh, the, the Cumbre Vieja. Yes, thank yeah. you very much. I mean, it was in the news quite a lot, and I get it because it was close to people. Yeah, and we get to observe, uh, you know, the molten lava, you know, approaching the cities, engulfing. Yeah, yeah, mm. like literally, literally doing that. But uh, is there anything special besides that about about this volcano? Because it was in the media like for weeks. You know, I, I got sick of it, it was. You know, listening yeah. to that. It still it, is. It's it still. still is. Yeah. I think it's still engulfing some houses at the moment. The new story right now is it's still erupting. That's basically the new story. Mm -hmm. Like it's still going. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So, but um, it, yeah. I mean, there, there's nothing like. There's actually nothing that special about it. It's kind of just doing what it normally does mm -hmm. it's just on a human time scale it looks kind of you know it it looks kind of impressive and scary to the people on the island at the same time sort of thing but yeah it's just doing this is it's just thing. what volcanoes do all those islands only exist because volcanoes erupted above the waves to make the land sure. to live on so the fact that there is an eruption is kind of normal but it has been 50 years so that's a long time in human yeah you know life lifestyle so so it's sort of just like you know, people just built houses really quite close to where things might erupt from and things, and then right, well, they're right, not there. Right. So it's kind of, yeah, it's a bit awkward. But no, nothing about it is actually that. It's just kind of a normal... It just happens to be right in the middle of loads of people's houses. So, so, so it's been it's thinking. been it's been erupting for how much time now? Uh, you'd say 50 days or something like that? Something like that. It's nearly two months, right? Yeah. Ne it's, nearly two months. It's, so, and so no one knows when it's going to end, so yeah. Yeah, that was my that that, yeah, that was actually my question. And how long can a cool. volcano actually erupt? I mean, what is the longest one that we know about? The, what's the, so the record is uh, where well, so the record for when humans were alive is was the eruption in Hawaii uh, from Kilauea, which was thirty five years. So that started erupting. Oh. That started erupting when Return of the Jedi came out originally, <laughs> uh, and it ended two years. Well. That eruption ended two years ago, <laughs> so uh, so that was a long eruption. But yeah, you <laughs> so yeah, what? it's crazy. I mean, was it was it was it as active as uh, the 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 one on the La Palma? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just that the the lava was contained. It kept spilling out every now and then to where people lived, but generally it was stuck at the summit kind of thing. But that's mm -hmm. when people knew something was going wrong. Like in 2018, the summit lava crater. It just drained and disappeared. And people were like, uh, well, where's that going? And then it just like erupted out of the side. So it kind of it, it had like a grand finale uh, in the summer of 2018 that was like pretty destructive, but also kind of very amazing at the same time. It made lava tornadoes, which is kind of crazy. Um, that's a, a thing that exists. A, lava, a, a lava tornado? What the? What yeah, is that? Basically, yeah. So basically, it's, it's like a tornado where you have the spiraling winds. It's just It just happens to be. So tornadoes need a, a source of heat to like start spinning up um, and some winds that cause it to spin as well. But it needs like that underlying source of heat. So if you have all this lava going somewhere um, and you have the right kind of winds, it can spin up a, a lava tornado. Not as, not as like powerful as like a tornado tornado, but um, it is still a spinning vortex of lava that's flinging molten rock everywhere. So what? it's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh my God. I know, how it's crazy. How how large is that thing? How how large can it get? I mean, I think it's I think it's the height. Of, I think it's like a decent sized building. I mean, it's not like you wouldn't want to go near it at all. So it was it was oh big. Yeah, yeah. God. And it's 
it's throwing rocks like molten rocks all of the all around. Yeah, and you think actually that you think that getting hit by molten rocks, the thing that you'd worry about first is the temperature because that it's obviously molten, so that'd be painful. But actually, it's the fact that it's still rock. So if a rock is gonna, <laughs> if if something the size of a refrigerator is going through you, the fact that it's hot is not the main problem at that point. <laughs> so yeah. it's the kinetic, and there is there is. The- there is the big problem that it will stick to you when it hits you. Yes. Yeah. It's not, yeah, yeah. 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 It's it's pretty messed up actually. You don't want to like you, you don't want to don't touch lava or get hit by it if if possible. That's heavily oh, recommended. My. It's quite Gosh. painful. All right. Yeah. So you're saying you're saying so 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 35 years a volcano is erupting. Yeah. Uh, can you yeah. can you describe um, like in very layman terms uh, what is the basic chemical composition yeah. of the things that are coming out of it? Because for 35 years you have something fuming like like a lot. Yeah. And we're speaking about like air yeah. pollution, global warming, and all that kinds. Of, I just want to understand yeah. what is the impact of having a, a volcano erupting for 35 consecutive years. Yeah, so it sounds it sounds pretty dramatic, right? Thirty five years is quite a long time. I mean, it's it's slightly older than me. So um, <laughs> if I, you know, it would have it, it would have existed right my entire life, sort of thing, you know, which is kind of a weird thing to think. But um, the actual impact on like so the stuff that's coming out is basically on Earth anyway. It's mostly a mixture of something called silicon and something called oxygen uh, and something called oxygen, silicon and oxygen, and and you basically get this like skeletal um chain of of chemicals that basically keep it really gloopy and the more of this chemical you have silica the gloopier it is so if you have a really really gloopy eruption then you get these explosive things because it's kind of like the whole you know um shaking up a bottle of coke or something and then just decapitating it and it all kind of spurting out or you have the stuff that you have in hawaii which is like not that gloopy and quite runny so it kind of comes out as just like rivers of lava and stuff it's kind of hard to get both at the same time but in terms of like the stuff that's like fuming into the air, there's actually almost there's very little impact that volcanoes have on like the the climate and stuff, at least on our on our, a human time scale. So mm-hmm. if anyone is like, oh, you know, it's it's be- belching out all this carbon dioxide, it's going to warm the thing. It's like not, I think like it's it's uh, I think a hundred times l- less severe than human induced kind of you know climate change kind of thing. So it's 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 like nothing. Basically, yeah. oh, but there, but there was one time in the, a few times in Earth's history where you've had an eruption so epic and it's gone on for millions of years that it has altered the climate to the point where it almost wiped out all life on Earth. <laughs> so that was a bit awkward, um, yeah, tiny just... bit awkward. <laughs> yeah, tiny well, bit. Well, but well, yeah, well, so, so the eruption for thir- the, the eruption for thirty five years sounds long, but there have been eruptions that have taken two million years. So that eruption has gone on for. You know that eruption existed longer than humans have existed as a species. So it's kind of if we evolved in that, and we saw this like giant river of lava just continuously coming out of this continent, uh, then it would just be normal. Yeah. That would be normal. So it's kind of a weird thing to think. <laughs> But we had this uh, this time in history. Uh, what was it called? Like the, the the small ice age. I think it was in the 17th or 18th century and I, 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 yeah. I vaguely I vaguely remember that this was call, uh, caused by a volcano as well so literally the the, the, the earth's average temperatures like uh, like it became colder every everywhere like it ruined crops and, and all kinds of stuff uh, and was that a result of a yeah. volcano again in Indonesia or something uh, or? there was something was that happened in the 1700s which I think was something a bit different but there was a there was an eruption of a volcano called Tambora in 1815 and then the next year there wasn't a summer in the northern hemisphere so it kind of it, it kind of cancelled things out and it's because it, it it sort of puked up a lot of something of sulfur dioxide basically that reacts with um water and sunlight and it forms like a reflecting veil to kind of uh cool the kind of hemisphere that that volcano erupted in but again only i mean it was an epic eruption it was really quite epic but mm. it it only still it only still kind of had an effect on the climate really for like a year and it was by a couple of degrees sort of thing so i think the best thing that came out of that was uh frankenstein i think mary shelley wrote frankenstein as partly as a result of that because they were going to have her and her friends were going to have like a nice summer outside week when it was really sunny and the weather was uncharacteristically terrible so they decided <laughs> to basically just bunker down and just write some short stories and i, and I think frankenstein came out of that so it's 
Yeah, so that's that's down to a volcano anyway. <laughs> All right, so was that... <laughs> Go ahead, Nicole, you wanted to ask something, mate. No, no, uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just wondering, apart from what we already mentioned, the lava and the sulfur deox- dioxide, mm. what else, what other kind of deadly things can exit from a volcano caldera like uh, for example we <coughs> mentioned we mentioned the falling rocks but what else like po- poisonous gases ashes yeah Lumber. so you can get like really noxious gas so like um you can get something called uh hydrogen sulfide which is basically that eggy gross smell that you uh-huh. get so, um it's not a good the smell of hell yeah. it's not, it's not, the smell of hell yeah the smell of hell or, and the smell of someone who's got digestive problems so it's not a good it's not a good uh don't go hiking on a volcano if your friend has like problems with their bowels because <laughs> you won't you won't be able to tell if the volcano is about to erupt or if your friend <laughs> is which is a bit awkward <laughs> 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 but um but yeah in terms of like the things that you really should like the things that I, I think everyone finds like super fascinating crazy those big clouds that kind of tumble down the mountain and rush down and like they like sterilize the landscape and it, and it sounds kind of like terrifying and crazy but it's kind of amazing that these mountains can kind of make this like superheated avalanche of stuff that if you're we're, if you're talking about the pyroclastic flows here. yeah yeah and if you get caught up in them you you uh you die pretty quick it's actually the quickest way to die via volcano i think um the most know, humane the most well uh i mean i don't know i wouldn't call it humane i mean you do get like you get you do get turned into like leather and no one wants to find you after that it's pretty grim okay. but it's like yeah i mean is that is yeah. that what the, what, 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 what the figures in pompeii are from I'm sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. yeah, yeah so, well, kind of, okay, kind of, yeah. I mean, so they were, they were like, so those figures that you see are like outlines of what were people, and they were like baked to, to death by pyroclastic flows and surges, which are like the gassier ones. And then all this ash kind of rained down, and they their bodies were preserved in that ash. And so basically, the m- figures you see are like molds that someone has made out of the holes. That they've left in the ah, in the ash oh kind of thing. So it's pretty. It's pretty crazy. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. So there yeah. is no body inside this thing, right? No, it's just no, a, no. It's basically yeah. just. It's like a vacancy almost, really. Than you know, than uh, the huh. uh, yeah. It's it's where it's like the ghost of a person that's been turned into a figure. It's really weird. Well, unless it's a Buddhist <laughs> monk, uh, you know, I won't be surprised if they find, you know, like a figure of a Buddhist monk, like sitting inside for 400 years. Well, actually, that's funny enough. What, if, if you knew one of these things was coming towards you, and you, I mean, you can't outrun them. I mean, if they, they sometimes go so fast that they can go uphill. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of ridiculous. So if one of them was coming towards you, it's good to know, like, a pose that you would have just to freak out future <laughs> archaeologists, you know, just, just something, you know, just salute. Or just flip the bird or something like that. Yeah, yeah, just because, you know, well, you might Def- as well. There's, there's, you can't get away. You definitely flip the bird. Yeah. Like, that. yeah. <laughs> like forever and I think, ever. I think I spend a lot of my time thinking about how I'm going to confuse future archaeologists. I think that's like, you know, that's a good it's, thing. Just like burying okay. random shit every now and then. Yeah, okay, just... and uh, what, about, what about tsunamis? I heard that sometimes volcanoes might cause <laughs> tsunamis, and I mean from the big ones. Yeah. Oh my yeah, god! For a, second, for, for, yeah. for a second there, I thought it's a, it's a, it's like a tsunami made of lava. After the tornadoes, I wouldn't be surprised you know, then. <laughs> but oh, there, was, yeah. there was, a, there was, a, there was, a, there was. A, I think there was a tsunami from lava from the La Palma one. Oh, no, there that's... was. A, they, they were just they a just small one. They're small. They just called. They just someone just called it a lava tsunami, and I'm like, well, I guess so. I mean, it's like it looks amazing, but I think <laughs> everyone's like, let's call it something crazy. I'm like, okay, but lava nados are real. Even though scientists are like, we don't really call them that. I'm like, what do you call them? And they're like, fire whirls. I'm like, but what do you really call them in the field when no one's looking? <laughs> they said, well, lava nados, obviously. I'm like, well, <laughs> obviously. But um, yeah, you can get tsunamis when, it, I mean, if you put a big chunk of anything into water, suddenly you're going to get a tsunami kind of thing. So if an asteroid smashed into the ocean, you'd get a tsunami. Um, and if a volcano just gets drunk and falls over, uh, and falls into the ocean, it can create a tsunami. I think that really famous, I actually can't remember what it's called. You know that Japanese like painting that's like that big wave? Um, it's you know, the really, really Hocus famous Hocus one. Yeah. I, I just, yeah, yeah. I think that was that wave was created by a volcano called Unzen that fell into the sea. I'm not 100% sure, but there's like 
volcanoes are sometimes just very good at doing that. <laughs> they just <laughs> they just fall into the sea. And um, the, the eruption of Krakatoa, I think most of the people died in that 1883 eruption. I think it was like 30,000. I think most of them were from tsunamis because the volcano just blew itself apart, fell into the yeah. sea. And yeah, you can't really see a tsunami coming. If you're on a boat, you just kind of bubble around a bit and then it gets to the shore and then it kind of builds up. And yeah, tsunamis are scary. They are scary. I think my advice is if you're ever on a beach and you feel shaking, if you're not sure what caused it, you should just go to higher ground just in case because like it might save your life genuinely. <laughs> All right, so so we're we're speaking about average volcanoes here, right? I mean, this is yeah. you know some some basic some basic stuff, but but your book is, but it's it's titled Super Volcanoes. So what is a super yeah. volcano? Andrew? Yeah, so so, uh, so so the book title is a bit of a pun. It's more like volcanoes that are super, but I do talk about super volcanoes <laughs> in it because obviously, right. uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I do talk about volcanoes, uh, super volcanoes in it, because obviously that would be just mean otherwise. And mm. uh, a super volcano is kind of a weird thing. It's like, like the best way of describing it is just like a really big volcano. Like it's <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of silly. It's one of these words that's kind of come about. And I think is that, someone, is that really that simple? You know, a big kind of, well, kind of. Someone regrets. I think people regret calling them that because it's it's um, so a super volcano is basically the one that's capable of erupting the most stuff at once. And it's mm -hmm. like a thousand cubic kilometers in one go kind of thing, which is just a number that I can't really Ooh. imagine. It's just a lot. But the mm. thing is, if you erupt 999 cubic kilometers, you're just a regular volcano, which is why it's kind of silly, really, because it's like <laughs> if you were standing in front of either of those, you wouldn't give a shit about that one you know, thing. You'd be like, well, this is terrifying. So, um, yeah, and they generally leave giant holes in the ground. They're like they leave giant scars in the ground kind of thing. So it's, they're not subtle. They're not like, ah, uh, I wonder where the super volcano is. Like, they're gigantic. You know, you can see them from space. You know, they take days to, get, to walk across. Um, they're pretty big. Yeah, they're they are basically just like really big, infamous volcanoes that don't erupt very often, but when they do erupt like crazy, but then probably die out afterwards anyway. So they're a bit weird. So not what, very well understood. Which is the biggest, uh, the biggest that we know of? And is uh, it on... I think the biggest one is actually... In Japan, actually, it's it's called Ira. I mean, it varies. I guess it depends on how you measure it. But there's one in on like a southwestern island in Japan, and um, it's so big that it has other volcanoes in it. So it's got one called Sakurajima, which is like it's it's really active. It erupts every like couple of days. Um, and there's one called Nakadake, which is it's like peak. I, I've flown across it with a helicopter, and hmm. it's just crazy. You can see all these like these like little mountains in this giant cauldron that's now full of farmland because it's it's like epic most devastating eruptive days are over it's just got like volcanoes kind of growing in it now like baby volcanoes kind of thing but you can find them you can find them all over there was there's there's like you know a few in america there's one called yellowstone that everyone gets super nervous yeah yeah <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. And, it's the end uh, of civilization yeah, like, as we know it, right? It's one of the ways that we're yeah, all going to die. Yeah, we, we're getting news from it all the time, like all those tremors, how yeah. often they are, and but people are bullshit, just right? waiting yeah. for it to blow up. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. The funny thing is, like, if a volcano that big was not making tremors, it would be weird as fuck. That, that was the thing. That would be so weird if it was, like, if it was just not doing a thing. Like, if you've got loads of magma moving inside you, if it made no noise, that would be really scary. That would be weird. But, like, um, the thing with Yellowstone is, I think it's, I don't know why, it, I think basically a documentary was made on it, like, 15 years ago, and it got this, like, reputation of, like, we're all going to die, something terrible is going to happen. Um, yeah, an apocalypse clock ticking yeah, somewhere yeah, yeah. In, 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 in the States. Yeah, but here's the thing, the thing is, though, like, you can trace, so you can trace Yellowstone's, like, origins, like, back millions of years, because you can find, like, these big almost like giant bomb craters um you know stretching all the way to like the western seaboard because the under it it's powered by this like upwelling of like superheated material from like the earth's heart kind of thing and as the, the the north american plate it's on is drifting and that fountain isn't moving it's just kind of making new explosions as it goes kind of thing so yellowstone's eventually going to die and it might and it has oh, no. And it has had two. Oh yeah, well, it's its day is over. It's like no. an Olympic athlete, you know. It's like an Olympic athlete. It might have won gold once or twice, but it needs to retire at some point before it just like, you know. So um, 
you know, it could it, you could get a mega eruption from there one day, but it's more likely to just never do it again. It's more likely to just fart so out you, a bit of lava every now and then, and and then just quietly die. And okay, so I think this is a perfect time. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I think it's a perfect time to squeeze <clears throat> some science from that one. I mean, yeah. can you explain what a lava chamber is? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so like magma chamber. This idea in people's head is like there's a big hole in the ground and it's full of molten rock. But actually, mm-hmm. no one has ever seen one of these things because they're underground and it's quite hard to. I don't know about you. If you try and like poke a hole full of magma, people generally don't live to to <laughs> <laughs> to see what's in it. So they they um they're basically more like uh they're basically more like sponges and there's like lots of like slightly soft rock and all the molten rock is in the in the holes in between kind of thing. So that's kind of really what they look like. So it's basically like a, a big collection of somewhat molten rock kind of thing. And <clears throat> the one under Yellowstone, actually there are two under Yellowstone stacked on top of each other. And I think one, the lower one is like, they're so big. I think the best way to phrase it is like, you could fit the entirety of New York City. If you put it into a ball, it would fit comfortably into one of them. I think the, the lower one. So there's... <sighs> So these, these things are gig- these things are gigantic, but at the same time, it's I think they're barely molten. They're like <clears throat> they're like five percent molten, and you need it to be like you know fifty percent molten or something for it to actually have a chance of erupting like properly. So it might just be losing heat, and it might just die and never like erupt again, sort of thing. So or it could like reawaken and things um, with an injection of heat from below. But the good thing is scientists would notice weeks that it wouldn't just suddenly happen you'd be like the ground is swelling up and there are loads of earthquakes you know that are tracking the movement of magma and like gases going like crazy it'd be really it'd be the hardest conspiracy to maintain to pretend that yellowstone wasn't going to erupt like i think ten thousand people like live in the or around the park they they would notice <laughs> you would like oh my house is not where it used to be Huh, I guess this is nothing. You know. <laughs> well, that's that's disappointing. I imagine this is one of the cooler ways that we will go. Uh, you know, together with uh, you know having a last stand, uh, having a last stand against an alien civilization where all the humanity is doing the hockey okay. at the same time. You know, like and like we go, we go. Oh, and yeah. is, that, is that your preferred form? Is that your preferred form of like apocalypse? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like sure, an sure. And, and and I don't know if you, you if you've seen the haka, you know, this Maori dance that the, yeah. the New Zealanders are doing. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine this will be yeah. the battle cry of the humanity. I want this to be our battle cry, you know, against the. Uh, it's a pretty good one. Yeah, against any alien <laughs> civilization. To, if you have to pick one, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'd go for that. Yeah. True, true. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Robin, you already mentioned that we should not be so worried about the Yellowstone. Yeah, but. Obviously, even though that you mentioned that super volcanoes are so big, mm. yet there, there there is one super volcano in the heart of Europe, and most of the people don't know about it. So, yeah. would you tell us a, a few words about the Campi Flegre in Italy? Yeah, so Campi Flegre. <laughs> this is one. Of, this is one of those things, right? So, Campi Flegre has had some epic eruptions. I mean, it is a giant cauldron again. But it's never quite reached uh, that 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 hallowed a thousand cubic kilometers, even though it's come quite close. So it's technically just a volcano, even though by anyone's definition, it is a giant volcano. Um, um, but yeah, that one is actually quite scary um, because um, it's kind of around the Bay of Naples, and like Vesuvius is the one that everyone thinks of as like the really infamous one in that area uh, for good reason. I mean, it, it destroyed Pompeii and a few other places. And if and it's still active, <clears throat> so um, it could erupt again. I actually dropped my phone into that once, and I had to climb down and get it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no. no way, really? <laughs> yeah, genuinely, yeah. But like, I, I would suggest that being clumsy is a terrible, terrible thing uh, if you're on the edge of like something like that. So yeah, it's kind of crazy. But I got it. I got it out, and it was fine. <laughs> Did they make them volcanic proof? <laughs> no, no. It just landed. It landed uh, just on something quite like. You know, nothing too spiky. I think so. so what did you, what, what okay. did you say? It's, it's like it's yeah. like the people who are guarding the place or whatever. What did you say? It's like, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, I dropped my phone there. Can you help me out? Reach it. I mean, oh, how did the people react? To that? <laughs> I mean, what, no, what I just hell? quickly, I, 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 without thinking, just sort of 
went under the barrier and just slid down into the crater of it and picked it up and ran out again, and clambered out again, which I would <laughs> ever recommend not doing. Just don't, do not do that. Do not try it. Do not try it at home. You know what I mean? But Dude, like, that's it was, a, that's, I that's really impressive. Lose my phone. That's impressive. I, 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 reckless, I, 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 yeah, 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 reckless, reckless, was, reckless is the right word. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, I, yeah, I, I, anyway. I, I I looked into the throat of Vesuvius and it's oh my god that was horrifying yeah but I'm afraid of heights it's a monster so. yeah <coughs> and that's the thing it looks big to us right us puny surface dwellers but Campley for Grey um is is kind of pretty giant I mean it's like it's got cities sitting in it um, cities like, cities mean? yeah 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 cities oh and towns sort of sitting in it and it's so it may not ever like it's hard to say because it, it like in the eighties there was a really worrying moment where it swelled up and then went down again and no one's quite sure like is that magma doing that or is it gas that has got trapped gas basically and so science is keeping an eye on it and if that if that area started to do anything worrying like you know and it looked like like a significant amount of lava in some way was going to come out of somewhere I mean you might have to evacuate like entire cities there and i don't think there really is uh, there might be a plan but i don't think anyone's tried to evacuate like a, an italian city before i'm not sure it would you know it's gonna, the it's gonna be a design for that kind of thing yeah yeah it's like it, it would be it's quite worrying actually can't believe for gray is like like if you live in naples technically you're living on on the like in the barrel of a gun i'd say kind of thing oh that, my that, god <laughs> that may or may not be loaded <laughs> you know and it, there's still magma in there but like is it gonna erupt no one's Quite sure. It might it might erupt next year, uh, you know, or it might erupt a thousand years from now. It, that's the problem. Like they don't exist on timescales that are, are fit with our human schedules. So it's kind of you know it's a bit uh, unnerving. All I'd say is that again, scientists, some Italian volcanologists are, <clears throat> are some of the best in the world, and they've monitored things as bestly as, as best as possible. So you would notice it wouldn't just suddenly do something crazy. But yeah, there is that giant. I mean, if there was a major eruption at Camp of Great, it would be like the worst, one of the worst natural disasters. Well, not natural, one of the worst disasters in human history, I think. So is, that one genuinely is quite scary. If I remember, millions live in it. You know, if so. I remember, if I remember it right, I think the last time it made a huge eruption was forty thousand years ago, and it just literally wiped up all the Neanderthals. I, I think if any Neanderthals were there, they wouldn't have in, had a. I don't I, I had a good. They wouldn't have had a good time. But yeah, the, that was the one that I think helped make the giant kind of rimmed crater that it's in today. So yeah, it's. Uh, but but it hopefully will, it, that was its. Hopefully that was its like. It's uh, magnum opus, and now it's just kind of chilling a bit, kind of thing. But it's. Uh, yeah, but, it's, but it's, well, yeah, if, it's if if, if it, it, the volcano, so. So. If it erupts, it will have implication throughout all Europe. It's not going to be Italy affected, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. If it's a major, major eruption, you have like, you know, it, I mean, it would cause widespread, you know, disruption to a lot of different things. And if you have like a persistent giant plume of ash, I mean, everyone saw what was happening with uh, that eruption in 2010 in Iceland, where the flights got grounded, kind of thing. I mean, no one say its name. Ash say its name. I can't. <laughs> you, can, you can do it, I man. You can do I it. used to be able to say its name, and now I can't. I, I I know the name of the one in Iceland now, but not the. There's something really tricky about that. Twenty ten. I can. I can. I can bet my left hand that Nicola can say it like without. No, without no, no, trouble. no. I can. I, I forgot. God damn it! I, I have to cut it now, man. Cut all. I forgot to cut all. Yeah, I have no. It I is something no like Ayafia Yoko or something, but even that is a terrible pronunciation. But it's yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think yokel means glacier, actually. So every time you see an Icelandic vol volcano that's got yokel, it, it basically is like something, something glacier, because everything is covered in ice, so they generally tend to erupt under it. So huh. that's where that kind of comes from. Uh, I want to uh, go back to your yeah. book, Andrew, though. I'm going to interrupt you here because I'm really interested in something. Uh, because you, you, yeah. you, uh, in your book specifically, what, uh, I mean, you say super volcanoes, yeah. what they reveal about Earth and the yeah. worlds beyond. What worlds are you talking yeah. about? So are, any any world that is, any world that has like a solid surface is almost certainly going to have volcanoes on it. So the moon had plenty of volcanoes. They're kind of dead now, though. Mars has vol the biggest volcanoes in the solar system. Like it has a volcanic kind of pimple on it that's three times the size of America, which is pretty big. I mean, everyone talks about Olympus Mons being like this giant epic volcano, and it is a massive volcano. It's like the size of Arizona which, or Island. Um, it's, it's pretty big. But when you have a volcanic, this this behemoth that's three times the size of America, I mean, 
when that formed, it tipped Mars over, which oh. I just think is nuts. Like, it's oh kind of crazy. God. It's it's when something is so... So planets do get tipped over. So we're, we're Earth is a bit drunk. It's, it's tipped back a bit. And it's generally thought that if planets are tipped over, it's because something smashed into them, which is a fair bet, you know, something big smashed into them. Something big smashed into us to make the moon. So, you know, um, I think my... Uh, my favorite thing that got tipped over, I think Uranus is tipped over 90 degrees, so it's on its back. So it's something really smashed into yeah, Uranus. It's bending so backwards, of course it back. is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and generally, if you have something smash into something, you kind of take a chunk of it off. And, and, and in order to balance your rotation, like if you, if you, uh, you know, um, if you're spinning on the spot, I don't know if any of you are uh, excellent at b uh, ballet, maybe, but I, you know, personally, um no i'm not but um <laughs> if you if you if you like if you like spin around on the spot and you've got like 10 kilos in each hand if someone puts five of those kilos on one hand you're going to tip over so you have to balance you have to spin differently to not just kind of fall over so that's what planets do when something knocks a chunk out of them but mars tipped itself over because it made a volcanic sort of you know metropolis so big that it tipped it over by 20 degrees, which is like if London suddenly was at the North Pole. Um, so it's kind of, it's, it would, it had severe, like, it's, severe it wasn't effect. subtle. Yeah, not, not subtle. Like it literally tipped it over. So um, it's kind of crazy that it's whole, everything moves, you know, the Sahara Desert would be in Europe kind of thing. It would be really, it would be crazy. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Earth, but I, I just want to understand this properly. We're talking about a volcano that is three times the size of America. Yeah. Yeah, that has thousands of its own volcanoes on it. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it's that, kind of... That that sounds like one, one, one fifth or one tenth, probably, of Mars's surface? Is that... Is that I think it, it's a quarter. I think it's a quarter. A yeah. quarter of it's the surface a, of Mars quarter, is a volcano. Yeah. A single. A yeah. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's literally a planet with a big gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, yeah. But probably, but it's probably run out of ammunition now, which is kind of good for Mars. But Mars is dead anyway, so. Um, but like, <laughs> so well, no, it's, it's, it's Halo's gone. But like any anywhere like that, you have ice volcanoes, which is is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, it's it is just a giant construct of ice, and it erupts like a slushy, weird mixture of like ice is out into space. So there's a moon on uh, around Saturn called Enceladus, and it's the one that has like an ocean inside that people think might have life on. Um, and uh, for ages, Saturn had this really clean ring called the E-ring, which is so pristine and reflective. It was like a mirror. And scientists were like, well, if it's billions of years old, why is it so clean? Like, it should be dusty now. And they worked out that basically this moon is erupting this icy material, and it's going into orbit around Saturn and making this ring. So there's a ring of Saturn being made by an ice volcano from one of its moons, basically, which is kind of crazy to me. I mean, it sounds like magic. But uh, as wow. long as you have heat on the inside of something, you will get volcanoes erupting stuff. So it's they're kind of everywhere, actually. Wow. Okay, uh, talking about volcanoes everywhere in the solar yeah. system, I, we know uh, you already mentioned fifty volcanoes a day or something, or forty. Yeah, or 40, something? yeah, a few dozen. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Okay, but is that does that makes the Earth the most volcanic place in the solar system? Probably not because there's something called Io, which is just. Oh nuts. my god! So there yeah. is another thing. There, there, there are, well, there's probably t there's, so there's two competing things. So there's a moon of Jupiter called Io, mm -hmm. um, and Io is it looks kind of gross. It looks like a moldy pizza, like it's not an appealing color. <laughs> but it's 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 it has like <laughs> it has a vol it has volcanoes on it that are named off like fire gods. So there's Loki on there, which is kind of cool, and Pele and like Prometheus and things like that. And basically, these are giant epic country-sized cauldrons of of lava that erupt almost constantly and sometimes they erupt so epically that they kind of like i think in the thermal in, in parts of the spectrum they outshine the sun depending on which angle you're looking at so these giant epic explosions you know um that uh like i think one there was an outburst at one like a few years ago that in in 10 seconds um could provide like the entire energy of the US or something for like decades or something. It was not that you could ever harness it, but like it, they're just insanely powerful. Like there's no way of imagining how powerful these things are really. And, and these volcanoes erupt so epically that they like 
So like the International Space Station is about 400 kilometers above Earth, like roughly. And these volcanoes on Io erupt um, to up to 600 and they go into space. And it like, you know, it forms this like shower of purpley blue crystals that like either go into space or rain down back on on the moon. It's crazy. It's crazy. And I think that like Io kind of outcompetes, like you never want to live there because um, you're either immediately melt or immediately freeze to death. So there's no, <laughs> it's, it depends on where you stand. No middle it. ground. No, There's no middle ground because there's barely an atmosphere. So you either, yeah, either you fall into one of these pits, which has the hottest lava in this. I think it's like 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, 1600 degrees. It's like cra- just nuts. Or if you stand next to one, you'll just freeze to death. Uh, so it's kind of, Pretty a pretty shit place to be, but kind of amazing to watch. Uh, speaking of shitty places, what about <laughs> Venus? <laughs> what about Venus? Venus? Is, oh yeah. Oh man. I, I like. So I wasn't. I didn't know. I knew a bit about Venus, but I didn't really think I'd end up writing about it. But then there was that whole thing last year about that chemical that people had seen and like phosphine, which might may may be a biosignature. Um, by the way, I don't know if you know that, but that that that. Phosphine, the, the the thing that scientists saw that were like, well, bacteria on Earth make it a lot, so maybe it's bacteria in the sky of skies of Venus. They first were inspired to look because uh, they read a pa- paper about penguin shit, and um, it was about how you can like detect. There's so much phosphine in penguin shit that you can like detect it from orbit. So they're like, ah, oh, why don't we just try doing that for another planet? And they looked at Venus almost as a joke, um, as a kind of calibration thing to be like, oh, let's just see if it works. <laughs> And they're like, Jesus, there's loads. So anyway, so that's that's really random. You never know where you're going to get hit by inspiration. Mm. So um, penguin poo. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Venus is so Venus is like Earth except broken. So <laughs> Earth and, <laughs> so Earth and Venus formed exactly at the same time. They're the same size, uh, except Earth is basically like a, a you know a paradisical isle in in this horrible kind of hostile universe when venus is the manifestation of hell it really is hilariously awful it's like if god <laughs> if any if whatever god had the worst day and they were like oh, okay we're gonna make this planet and not only so the surface is 900 degrees celsius so you'd immediately burst into flames if you tried to walk on the surface the pressure is 92 times that of earth's surface pressure so you'd be pancaked um and uh, I would say worry about the acid rain, but it's so hot on the surface that it can't even rain acid rain. So what what would happen is uh, the atmospheric pressure is so high that it would force the boiling air into your lungs. So you wouldn't really. So you would. It would fill you and melt you from the inside, and it would be the worst thing. It'd be the worst thing. So yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> and volcanoes probably cause that. <laughs> so, yeah. so volcanoes it's, it's probably cause that. Very bad. <laughs> yeah so so the leading the leading theory is uh every t- a few times in earth's history there have been these epic eruptions like that one that was like two million years long but we've only had one at one time which and even and one 250 million years ago wiped out 90 percent of life on earth from the climate change it caused basically <laughs> so the theory is if there were two of these at the same time you might cause climate change so irreversible that nothing the planet can do to regulate its temperature. Like it can't bury that carbon. Any oceans it had would be vaporized. Like there was an ocean on Venus at some point. It may, it may have been steam, but it might have been water, but there was an ocean's worth of water and it got like obliterated by like these epic eruptions that kind of just boiled the planet. So um, Venus is like what earth could have been. Uh, and the question is, is Earth or Venus more common in the cosmos? Is it like, do volcanoes trash worlds more often than not, or do they make them habitable? And that's a genuinely massive question. Like, don't know. No, we don't know. Um, so if they can work that out, we'll get, we'll, you know, alien life will either be more or less probable based on what volcanoes want to do, whether they want to destroy a planet or keep it alive. Well, well I mean, yeah, uh, I, would, I, I would like to... I would like to quote a colleague of Robin. Uh, I, you might have know you, you might know him. Uh, he's a Greek guy, volcanologist Stavros Melitidis. Yeah, I do know him actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he yeah. he he claims volcanic eruptions show that the planet is alive. 
Yeah. So that's that's really it's really interesting to know that something so catastrophic is mm. like the vital signs of our planet. Yeah. Yeah. It's just we happen to live on it. It's like the price and privilege you pay for living on a planet is that if there were no eruptions on a planet, we wouldn't have had the first draft of our atmosphere. We wouldn't have had, you know, most people think life probably came from like hydrothermal vents now, which are under the ocean. If you didn't have that like heat coming out and all these kind of chemicals and things. You just have a dead planet. You just have something like Mars is a dead planet now, pretty much. I mean, it, there might be some twitching going on, but it's basically like it's lost its heat and its fire. So it's 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 kind of, and you can see what's happened to it. Its atmosphere has gone. You know, it's dried up, kind of thing. Like you want volcanoes to be erupting, kind of thing. You know, maybe not to the extent that it happened on Venus, but <laughs> Earth is this kind of nice, like middle ground where there's there's it's they're happening kind of calm enough overall. And um, everyone's just hoping there won't be some sort of planetary malfunction for a couple of million years or something like that. But at least we'd notice. We wouldn't be like, shit, oh, shit, what's that? Like a million years into it, you know. So. <laughs> well, so, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, let's 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 hope so. Uh, Andrew, uh, uh, Andrew, oh, Jesus Christ, what is the matter with me? Robin. It Robin. happens a lot, actually. A lot yeah, of people yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You have you have this beautiful name, you know, Robin, and I keep messing it up. Uh, listen, it's really awesome. Uh, it's really awesome talking with you. I really hope that we will manage to do a live event again uh, at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you pass by, you know, give us a give us a call. We'll set up something quick, uh, quick together. We'll pull up, you know, some some stuff and you know do something in a club. Oh, we you know, will. We will definitely do that. Now that we are offering your book to our audience, it will be only fair for them to have a chance to yeah. meet the authors and have a signature. Yeah, yeah. No, I could like fling it to them into the crowds, and they have to like. <laughs> yeah. it. People, people, people will die yeah. fighting for it. Yeah, I'm oh, pretty that, sure. I tell you what, that I tell you, if you can get that published as a review, that'd be great. People would die fighting for it. It's the most <laughs> epic review. <right? laughs> that's so good. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> it was it was really awesome talking to you, uh, Robin. So uh, just to re remind you, this is uh, Robin, uh, Robin George Andrews, the volcanologist and a science writer and a really cool guy. Uh, his book is Super Volcanoes, What They Reveal About the Earth and the Worlds Beyond. And we offer that exclusively on our website, uh, ratio.bg slash shop. That's for Bulgaria, no, at least. No, no, no. I did I mess not, it up. It's shop. It's shop. Dot I, 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 I keep missing this. <laughs> so that. people, people know where <laughs> our shop are, but you have actually two different chances to get the book. One is only the book, so you can read it by your own. But we also included that book as a package in our Christmas package. This will be available for pre-order just after you hear this podcast. But you can also, uh, you know, uh, get it as a Christmas present and send it to some friend or relative that might be interested in volcanoes or might be just scared of them so you can scare the shit out of him <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in any case this is an official premiere so uh robin uh, remind me your official premiere of the book is on the 2nd of december am i right uh the wait no the, so the book the date the date changed a bit but it's it's out in america and things it's been out for a couple weeks but it'll be out in the uk and europe on the 30th of november um mm -hmm. pretty much so um so yeah that'd be really weird like i've it's out in places i've yet to see it so i keep getting sent <laughs> photos of people holding it and i'm like i haven't even seen it yet so it's kind of <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that anyway so i can have a little a little moment but yeah the 30th of november is when it should be out pretty much everywhere perfect so right, you once, can have your hands on it yeah <laughs> and once it's out i will get my hands on it as well and it's gonna it's gonna find its place over over here and when we're gonna have the second conversation hopefully i'll get a signature from you as well robin robin oh, it's been cool. yeah. it's been really cool mate uh, it's always nice to see you and i do uh, and i do really hope that very very soon you will drop you will stop by to have a drink with us oh it'd be great no i i have i have crazy plans for next year assuming everything doesn't go terrible again <laughs> so, it'd be good to see you guys again thanks for having me yeah very, very that's that's very cool thank you very much robin for taking the time with us and uh we'll talk to you later and now i'm gonna switch to bulgarian billy the future man the bulgarian
6, Никола. Добре. Малко, м- 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 малко трябва да ми се развържа сега, сега езика. А, ами, общо зато май това беше всичко от нас. Няма някакви фоллоуап неща, които да казваме. Мисля, че Никола каза всичко ясно. А, примерата на книгата е кога на 30 ноември и ние предлагаме ексклюзивно на нашият, в нашия онлайн магазин. Заедно може да я купите или отделно, или да си я поръчате в нашия, в рамките на нашия коледен пакет. Повтарям го отново. Който включва и много други неща. Който включва книгата, много други трябва неща, да кажем. Да, които са, които са изненада съответно. Вероятно с някаква коледна тематика. Не знам. А, във всеки случай благодарности, че останахте с нас и ви благодарим и на онези от вас, които не само ни слушате, но и ни подкрепяте в сайта patreon.com. Благодарим на хората, които го правят. patreon.com на коледна черта Рацио БГ. Моля, продължавайте да ни подкрепяте, а, за да продължим да съществуваме и за да си говорим. А, това беше всичко от нас. Надявам се да се чуем и следващия път. И за сега. Ciao, ciao.